In this video, I will show you how to send custom metrics to Google Analytics 4. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. And if you want to stay up to date with Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing. By now, you should already know how to track and configure custom dimensions in Google Analytics 4. Basically, any custom parameter that you send to GA can be later configured as a custom dimension. If you are new to this, I will post a link below this video to another tutorial. But just like it was with Universal Analytics, you can also send custom metrics to GA. And in this video, I will show you what they are and how to configure them. Let's take a look. Before we continue, I wanted to give you a quick introduction to metrics and how are they different from dimensions. And this applies not only to Google Analytics, but to all analytics tools in general. So dimensions are attributes of something, for example, attributes of product, attributes of an event, attributes of user, and they describe something. And here are several examples. For example, page URL is a dimension. Then we have traffic source. It can be google.com, analyticsmania.com, something else. Then we have coupon code, item category, user country, and these are just several examples. So don't limit yourself. So as you can see, they describe something and we can use this to create segments, audiences. For example, you can create a report where all the hits are only of those sessions where traffic source is google.com. And as for metrics, they are quantitative measurements. They let you count things. Or in other words, they are numbers. Although in some cases, numbers can also be dimensions, but let's just keep things simple right now. So here are several examples. Order total is a metric. Event count, definitely a metric. Then we have number of logins. For example, how many times did a user log into your website? Then how many times did a certain client make purchases on your site? Then a product price can also be a metric. So as you can see, these are numbers and we can count them. For example, if one visitor made four purchases and the other one made five purchases, then in total you have nine purchases. So the metric is number of purchases, which is nine. But in this case, things like order IDs or coupon codes, they are dimensions. So if we take a look at the reports in Google Analytics 4, on the left side, you see dimension, which is page path. And on the right side, we have two metrics. One is active users, or in other words, the number of users who have visited these particular pages, and then the event count. In this case, I have filtered down to the page view event. So these are the numbers of page views on these particular pages. And while there are many built-in metrics in Google Analytics 4, sometimes you need more because Google Analytics is built as a tool for as many businesses as possible. So it cannot automatically adapt to every business's needs. In other words, if you want to have more, you must customize. That's why you can send additional metrics to Google Analytics 4 and they're called custom metrics. For example, here we have a dimension, which is page path. And this is the list of pages where visitors did something. However, here I have two metrics. One is active users. So you remember that from one of the previous slides. And here I have another metric, which is video views. So this metric will show how many times did my visitors started to watch a video. And this is not the only example of custom metrics. Here are several more. For example, if you want together with purchases, you can send the discounted amount as a custom metric. And later you can see in your reports how much discounts have you in total provided to your customers. Another example could be number of form submissions. Of course, I mean, you could just use the event count metric and have the form ID, for example, as a dimension, but also you can send the number of form submissions as custom metric. And then in a report like this, we could have a third metric which would be, let's say, form submissions. So in some cases, it makes more sense and it is more flexible to create custom metrics. And in fact, as of the moment of recording this video, Google Analytics 4 allows you to have up to 50 custom metrics per property. And I'm talking about Google Analytics 4. All right, so that's enough of the theory. And now let's take a look at how can we implement this video views metric in Google Analytics 4. So here I am in my Google Tag Manager container. I also have a demo Google Analytics 4 property. This property is already installed in the container. So I have the GA4 configuration tag. Now let's take a look at the page that I'm going to track. So here is some demo website where I have an embedded YouTube video player. So let's say that every time a visitor starts playing a new video, we will send it as a custom metric as well. So first of all, let's go to Google Tag Manager, triggers, then new, trigger configuration, and then we will choose the YouTube video trigger. Now you might be thinking that we should enable all of these checkboxes because if you are familiar with the video tracking, you probably know that it is enough to have just one trigger to cover all the situations. However, in this case, we want to send the custom metric only with the start event. 
and all the other events like complete or progress, they should also be sent, but without a custom metric. So in this case, we will have two tags and two triggers. So let's first have that start event like this, and let's name the trigger. And then I will create a new YouTube trigger for all the other events. So let's say that I want to track 10, 25, 50, 75, and 90% thresholds. And then I will name this trigger YouTube complete progress. Click save. Now let's go to tags and create two GA4 event tags. Click new, tag configuration, then GA4 event, select your G4 configuration tag. And here we are going to send the event. So we have to come up with some event name and we will add some additional parameters. Now, speaking of the video tracking, Google Analytics 4 has a built in YouTube video tracking, which is a part of enhanced measurement. And in that case, the video names are video start, video progress, and video complete. And also there is a bunch of parameters right here. So since we are going to track video interactions with Google Tag Manager, obviously you should first go to the data streams of your Google Analytics 4 property and disable the video engagement tracking because otherwise you will get duplicate data. So right now we have disabled the video tracking in GE4 and we will be relying only on the YouTube tracking that we are going to implement in GTM. So here we have to decide what the name will be. With this tag, I'm going to track video start events. That name is available right here. So I will just copy it, video underscore start, and then event parameters. So here we can include all of these parameters that are automatically tracked by enhanced measurement. I mean, you don't have to do that, but since this information is already actually available in Google Tag Manager, we can just reuse it. So copy all parameters like this. And there's also a visible parameter, but I just don't usually use that. So I will not include it right here. And in the value section, we should include respective video variables that are built in in the Google Tag Manager container. So click on the variable right here. By the way, right now I'm going to configure this video current time parameter. So I should find a variable that will return the video current value. So click this button and then let's take a look right here. And I haven't enabled any built in variables related to video. So I should click on built ins right here and then find current time. And here it is video current time. Now video duration. Let's do the same thing. But but now I should be looking for some variable that will return video duration. And you should do the same thing for all the other variables right here. And in the meantime, I will pause the video and I will continue once I enter all the fields right here. By the way, what I'm doing right here is not required by custom metrics, but I just want to send some additional custom dimensions. And then at the end, we will also send one custom metric. Okay, so now I have filled in all the variables right here. This is just a preparation for the event tracking in general. And now we are going to send an additional thing, which is going to be a custom metric. So since we are sending video views, we can send an additional parameter that is called video view. I just came up with this on my own. There is no need to name it like this. It can be something different like video impression or video metric or something else like this is up to you. And here, every time this event is sent, we want to increment that video view metric with one. So if for example, three visitors watch this video, this tag will fire three times. Therefore, the video view metric will be incremented by one three times. So as you can see right now, we have inserted a bunch of parameters, which are also known as dimensions. And additionally, we have inserted one custom metric that we are going to later configure in the interface of Google Analytics 4. So now let's go to triggering. And here we should choose that start trigger like this and then name the tag, click save. And then we can create another tag for the second trigger, which is for progress and complete. So go to tags go to that start event and we will make a copy of that and we can name it video progress and video complete. And here we're going to dynamically insert either complete or progress based on the interaction that happens. And we can do that with a built in variable that is called video status. So it is a built in variable. So if you haven't enabled that yet, you should go to the built in section and then keep looking for status. So here it is video status. So every time this tag is fired, we will send either video underscore progress or video underscore complete because the value of the video status variable can be start progress or complete. And then let's change the trigger. So remove that start trigger and then select complete progress trigger. Click save. Now let's enable the preview mode, enter the URL here. 
And also at the same time, I will go to the debug view of Google Analytics 4. We can find it at the bottom of the left sidebar right here. And we see that the debugger is connected. It is also connected right here. So let me just quickly start playing the YouTube video. Then I can also quickly fast forward till the very end to get that complete event and the video has ended. And if I go to the preview mode, I see that there are no events related to YouTube. Let me just quickly check trigger. Oh yeah, I forgot to enable this checkbox. So you should enable the checkbox in all of your YouTube triggers. And let's do the same thing right here. And let's refresh the preview mode. And here I'm going to play the video once again, and then I will fast forward till the very end so that I would get two videos. And here I have one video for the video start. So this is one tag that fired and the other one is for video complete. Now, if I go to the debug view of Google Analytics 4, I will see the video start event and video complete event. So I click on the video start and here you will see a bunch of parameters and also you will see video view. This is our custom metric that we are going to configure and its value is one. So this means that every time this event is tracked, we will increment the number of the metric by one. And in the video complete event, I also realized that I included the video view. So let me just quickly disable that. Yeah, so this one should not contain the video view because we want to increment only when the video start occurs. So now I will quickly refresh the preview mode once again. Again, play the video like this, then end of the video and like this. Two video events in the preview mode, then two events right here. At least they should appear soon. Video start, then we see video complete. And on video start, we have video view metric and on video complete, we don't have. So this is the correct setup. And now the final thing that you should do if you want to start seeing that video view metric in your reports is to go to custom definitions in Google Analytics 4, go to custom metrics, and then click create custom metrics. And here you enter the name of the metric. So in our case, that might be video views. The scope is event, description is optional. And here you should enter video views parameter name that we have included in our Google Analytics 4 tag. It must be exactly like this video underscore view. If you enter some different name here, that different name must also be right here. In this case, we should select standard. So every time we send something, it is just a number account. So for example, if you select to increment by five, that will still work. And you should still select the standard unit of measurement. If you are tracking a different custom metric that is related to money, for example, when you make a purchase, you also send the discounted price as a metric. So in that case, you should select currency. There are also some other units of measurement, but usually I use these two. So in this case, we should select standard and click save. This is the metric. And the next day after you configure this custom metric, you will be able to use it in things like analysis hub. So for example, here I am in the analysis hub exploration report, and you can find it by going to analysis and analysis hub. And here, let me quickly create a report for you. So this is a different property and I've been collecting that video views metric for a while. So if you want to start using that custom metric in your report, you should go to the variables tab of the exploration report and in the metric section, click plus. And here you should keep looking for video views, enable it, apply. And then in the dimensions, let's say that we want to see the report based on the page path in the dimension section, click plus, then enter page path, select it, apply, then drag it to rows like this. And then you can add some additional metrics in the values section, for example, you can get rid of the event count and then you can add things like active users and video views. And then you can click on that metric in order to sort based on that particular metric. So to sum up, what we did in this video is that we added an additional parameter in the event tag. So this means that every time this tag fires, we will increment the metric by one. And then we had to go to Google Analytics 4, custom definitions, custom metrics, and register that parameter as a custom metric. And within 24 hours, or in other words, the next day, you will start seeing this metric in your analysis hub reports. And that is how you can customize your data collection even more with GA4 with help of custom metrics. If you have some additional ideas where you can use custom metrics, let me know in the comments. I am sure that other people who watch this video will find that very helpful. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.